If you're new to horology, you may think that nice watches are reserved for those willing to spend four or five figures. I don't blame you either. Take the Rolex Oyster Perpetual for instance. It's an incredibly versatile watch with a classic design and top tier finishing. A watch that would look at home on almost any man's wrist. For one in decent used condition, you're currently talking upwards of £5,000. To some, this may seem like chump change, but for many of us, that's a hell of a lot of money to spend on anything, let alone a watch that might not see use every day. If the second one sounds familiar, then keep watching. You see, I've hunted down a watch that fills that same void, but is only 2% of the price. It's not a counterfeit watch or a one-to-one -one clone with a different brand name stamped on the dial. Instead, it's got its own identity, whilst sharing many of the properties that make the Oyster Perpetual so revered. Meet the Seiko SNK361. Some of you may recognize this one, as I've alluded to it in previous videos, but today it's gonna steal the spotlight. You see, this is one of my very favorite affordable watches, and I can't believe it's not seen more coverage online. I've seen a few outlets praising the similarly styled Seiko SNXS lineup, but this one seems to have flown under the radar until now, despite being a more compelling and well-rounded package. We'll briefly compare the two later, but let's see what my pick offers for starters. The watch arrived in typical budget Seiko packaging. It will protect the watch in transit, though predictably isn't as elaborate as the boxes provided with luxury watches. Upon opening the lid, the narrative changes somewhat. Undoubtedly, this SNK361 looks much more expensive than the £100 price tag would suggest. If you want to pick one up, it's affiliate linked in the video description. Hopefully they don't discontinue this model. For those of you who are new to watch collecting, Seiko 5, as you can see here, is essentially Seiko's entry-level automatic series of wristwatches, which typically fulfill the five criteria that you can see on screen. This range is often lauded as offering some of the best value for money and can look dramatically different from one another with a near infinite variety of shapes, sizes, and dials. Having tried numerous versions over the past couple of years, I think the 01VO case used with this SNK361 is arguably the best looking of them all. Not only is there an immediate similarity to the likes of the Oyster Perpetual with the prominent shoulders and high shine bezel, but this also offers faceted flanks that house the alternating brushed and polished sections, which you won't find on some of the alternative Seiko 5 cases, where the designs are more simplistic. This is the first area where the SNK emerges ahead of its SNXS rivals in the quest to become the best budget Rolex alternative. You see, the SNXS models have an inferior case style, named the 0480T, that have a basic glossy finish throughout which looks notably less sophisticated, especially given the way it clashes with the brushed stock bracelet. The OV10 case is not only more reminiscent of the original Oyster from above, but crucially has thicker and more curved sides that allow the watch to sit better on the wrist. You're not left with that floating UFO aesthetic propagated by the bulging rear on the 0480 case, something that promptly turned me away from those models. Surprisingly, even though the flanks of the case are thicker, the SNK361 itself is thinner overall than the SNXS series, with a 10.6 mm thickness, accompanied by a 37 mm diameter and a 41.8 mm lug to lug size, which combine to make the watch wear much like a 36 mm Datejust or something of equivalent size. As such, this piece is gonna suit those after a smaller watch with reduced wrist presence. Vintage proportions, if you will. Compared to other watches on the market, the level of finishing here is adequate, though not fantastic. I've seen more precision with the likes of the Casio Edifice lineup, though those pieces do have quartz movements, which inherently frees up funds for other areas, such as the case. Still, it's fine and is easily carried by the remarkable dial, which we'll examine shortly. To the rear, you get a glimpse of the automatic Seiko 7S26 movement that keeps this watch ticking. While far from a horological game changer, this entry-level mechanical offering still showcases more finesse than the basic circuitry found in battery-charged modules. While this movement lacks hand-winding or hacking capabilities, it still makes for a suitable first automatic for those yet to try one especially at such an appealing price point. The true USP of this Seiko SNK361 comes in the way of the dial. You've probably glimpsed it in some of the B-roll shots so far, and holy moly, is this special for such an affordable watch? From the macro footage, 
you'll see the array of microscopic Seiko 5 crests inhabiting the entire black surface. A level of detail I'm yet to see matched at this price point. Before receiving the watch, I had my doubts about the attractiveness of this unusual texture, given my indifference to the symbol itself. However, the execution ensures it's no gimmick, with the subtlety to remain hidden in the majority of scenarios, only emerging when the lighting is just right. Even if you're not a fan of the emblem, this application undoubtedly gives a level of finesse compared to some more expensive watches, and serves as a fitting final hurrah for the outgoing Seiko 5 Shield, which is in the process of being replaced by a more contemporary inked alternative. If you're after something with more pop to it, there are alternative colours such as blue and white that retain the same miniature detailing, though I find black the most versatile, hence my decision to grab this one. Outside of that, there are further design elements that clearly take inspiration from the likes of Rolex, including the near identical baton handset and the simple narrow second markers at the circumference. Here it's worth pointing out that the SNXS series offers dials that better match those on an Oyster Perpetual, with none of the aforementioned texturing and a set of vowel markers that bear a more striking resemblance. If you aim to create the ultimate Seiko Perpetual, then you can effectively combine the two by transplanting the dial from the SNXS into this SNK case. Alessandro at Times Square did just that, and the final result certainly looks closer to that famous design. It's a great looking Franken watch, I must say. That being said, it doesn't align with my objective. After all, you could just buy an affordable homage watch that rips off the Rolex to an even greater extent and with better specs too. I prefer the stock SNK361 as it gets just close enough to lean into that versatile styling and elegance that makes the Oyster Perpetual lineup so popular without selling itself short in an attempt to be a blatant carbon copy. Obviously, this watch is not comparable in quality to a luxury watch, with only a hard legs crystal and a rubbish 18mm bracelet that could do with being replaced at your earliest convenience. A couple of steel options are linked in the description in case you're on the lookout. Nevertheless, it looks fantastic and houses enough original flair to make it probably the classiest watch under £100 at the time of writing. Most of us can't responsibly afford a Rolex, but for a fraction of the price, this Seiko does a top job of filling that void and your friends will probably think you've spent much more on it. Should this piece ever be discontinued, then look out for the SNKL45, which is the same outside of the dial and handset. It's not as distinctive, but it's a looker in its own right. A bit like my freshly buzzed head. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.